It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's nightly-ish media roundup. I'm Roland Boyd, and I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news of the midweek edition of 5.45 Live here, during which we'll discuss this miraculous strolling of the heifers parade, not a drop of water despite uh, those forecasts. We'll get you some great footage of that. Also some slow-living summit clips as well. We'll talk about uh, the six-month anniversary of the Newtown, Connecticut shootings and an event going on in Brattleboro this coming weekend. Interviews to go along with that. And uh, the Northeast Family Institute Institute's bean, uh, Pitching for Families Beanbag Fundraiser uh, is coming up this weekend as well. We'll get you some footage of that. Uh, plus, uh, we'll talk Bernie. He's got student debt on his mind. Uh, we got plenty of other clips in there as well. We'll hype graduation coming up uh, on BCTV. All that and more. We're going to do it in 15 minutes. Heck, maybe even just, just a tiny bit less right here on 545 Live. goes by the name of Gint. Welcome back to this June 11th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. That's footage from this year's Leland and Gray graduation in Townsend, a lively event which included, in addition to the fancy dresses and choreographed backup dancers, an arrival by motorcycle for class speaker PE teacher Tom Russell. Uh, there was also a speech by Walkie Talkie and plenty more included in that video. BCTV will again be on hand this coming Saturday morning to gather footage of the always boisterous proceedings closing out a graduation doubleheader that begins with BOHS commencement, set to broadcast live from Natowich Field this Friday at 6.15 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. And of course, that Leland and Gray graduation we are showing clips of, uh, as well as uh, all the previous BOHS graduations from the last several years can be found at brattleborotv.org to stream at your leisure again uh, live coverage, which will show right here on BCTV Channel 8 and can subsequently be streamed live on that website, same website, brattlerotv.org, starts at 6.15 p.m. Uh, right here on Channel 8 this coming Friday. Now, speaking of live events, we had all the gear out in the field this past weekend as well, and it's with that somewhat uh, smooth segue that we'll launch back into the stories, back into the close-up gear. Forecasters may have written off this year's strolling of the heifers weeks in advance, but not a cow or spirit was dampened, as this year's internationally renowned celebration of community and agriculture had its best run yet. And with it, BCTV's ve best video coverage as well. We've got the footage to prove it. by the struggling of the heifers people, especially on the weather. How about that weather? I'd have worked with an audience more often. <laughs> That video, including commentary of WTSA's Tim Johnson and WKBT's Peter Case, known to many uh, as Fish, is available to rewatch at your leisure at brettlebrotv.org. And we'll continue to rebroadcast it throughout the week right here on BCTV Channel 8 as well. Supplementing content being uh, turned around from this year's Slow Living Summit, which unfolded all this week uh, with the likes of author Francis Moore LePay and the UN's uh, Robert uh, Rapedo as he took the stage at the Latches to relay news of uh, life in the slow lane and the, quote, reflective approach to answering how we live work and play as human beings on a fragile earth that uh, accompanies it. BCTV's hardworking volunteers were there to capture a bevy of speakers, panels, awards, and breakout sessions at the Latches and across the way at the Marlboro Graduate Center, where the summit kicked off with the crowning of their Strolling of the Heifers Vermont Farm Food Business Plan Competition finalists. It's exciting. I mean, this is a great partnership between Strolling of the Heifers and Vermont Technical College, and I think that just exemplifies that there's a lot of exciting energy and innovation and education that goes on as a result of this of this business plan competition. Every one of these people are entrepreneurs, they had perseverance, and they all attended to quality. They all have a story to tell. So I'm pleased to be here today, hopefully, at the beginning of one of these stories for these award winners and people being recognized. Joe, so, congratulations. 
Those three full days of slow living summit plenary breakout sessions, panels, awards, comments, and the like uh, were taped by hardworking PCTV volunteers, and they've already started showing as they'll unfold uh, right here on Channel 8 uh, all through the summer. And of course, stream them at brattlebrotv.org if you like. All right, uh, we're going to move on now and talk about some more things coming up this weekend. Talk a little bit about bean bags, and for that, back into the close up we go. All right. Well, beanbags may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of responsible foster parenting, but for the Northeast Family Institute, the Brattleboro-based nonprofit dedicated to facilitating successful foster care in our community, they were the perfect call when it came to finding a new way to raise money for the organization. The event, dubbed Pitchin' for Families, set to kick off this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the newly opened West River Park, where local residents will compete for funds raised by sponsors in the coming week in a beanbag toss set in double elimination format and bound by official American Cornhole Organization rules. That's all something we had to have the event's co-chair, NFI Office Manager Tracy Miller, explain in person. You need to stand at your end and throw the beanbag into the hole at the other end. And then you accumulate points depending on where your beanbag falls. That video part of a BCTV open studio, again hosted by WTSA's Tim Johnson, which includes beanbag tossing demonstrations and more, as well as some more serious fare from longtime NFI resource coordinator Lydia Mahan, who took the opportunity to discuss the importance of her organization's role in a notoriously difficult transition, a transition into a new family. One of NFI's strengths is we work pretty intensely with our foster parents. There's a lot of communication. It is not at all unusual for a case manager to speak with a foster parent a couple of times a day. More info online uh, about this Pitchin' for Families beanbag tournament, how to uh, sponsor someone, donate, get involved with the weekend, bring your kids, uh, plan uh, the Saturday trip again at 1 p.m. out to the West River Park. That can all be done at firstgiving.com slash 23937. All right, uh, we're going to move on here and in case uh, beanbags and graduations uh, it's only just uh, the tip of the iceberg for you as far as planning your weekend. There's more going on uh, as well, more to get involved with. And for that, we go back into the stories. Let's take a look. The six month anniversary of the school shootings in Newtown, Connecticut have prompted uh, area residents to hold a vigil for the tragedy's victims at 7 p.m. this Saturday night on the Common in Brattleboro. For an evening, Wyndham District 4 rep uh, and event sponsor Mike Merwicki hopes will transcend the often bitter debate surrounding the tragedy's subsequent uh, discussion on gun control laws. There's going to be a, a memorial service, a commemoration for the people at Newtown, and um, support for those of us who would like to see the legislature take a step next year uh, around background checks, uh, who, who would like to, to put public safety in a different light. And while Mike may be the first to point out Vermont's long uh, successful history with firearms, especially those associated with hunting, even agriculture, he joins the ranks of many looking to stem gun deaths in the state by opening what he calls a new kind of discussion on gun control. And with the Kaiser Family Foundation reporting Vermont's rate of gun deaths as leading all other New England states, members of the advocacy uh, coalition Gun Sense Vermont say it's time to push realistic legislation, legislation that can protect Vermont's communities and Vermonters' Second Amendment rights at the same time. Earlier this week, we spoke with Vermont Gun Sense founder Ann Braden, who will be on hand at this weekend's vigil to represent the organization she says uh, includes Vermonters of all kinds, gun owners included, who want to move past the nation's controversy when it comes to finding a solution. The coalition, it, we, have, we have lots of gun owners, which I think is really important. I really feel like it has to be a wide, uh, a widespread conversation. I don't feel like it's about gun control. It's about putting into place some basic regulations to make sure that, you know, guns don't fall into the wrong hands or to at least make it harder for guns to fall into the wrong hands. You can find more from Ann in her full interview uh, online on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Just look up uh, Brattleboro TV and any one of those sites. Of course, that BrattleboroTV.org uh, website. I hype time and time again uh, will work as well. All right, uh, time to move on again as I frantically search through my notes. And uh, this time we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some Dummerston DRB select board drama. Why is it uh, back in the headlines again? Well, they've got a special meeting. Heck, uh, I'll just let the script do the talking here. Tensions between the Dummerston DRB and select board have continued to rise throughout the spring, prompting the town to hold a special joint meeting this coming June 27th at 6 p.m. at the Dummerston Congregational Church which invites the public to join the two governing bodies in discussing town issues. 
This comes after a Dummerston Development Review Board decision to deny one local couple's application for an in-ground pool made headlines this spring. And after the select board's criticism of the denial led to DRB Chair Herb Rest stating publicly that he had been bullied, the select board's move to appoint a new DRB chair in his place was sure to leave a few unanswered questions hanging about. And while select board chair Zeke Goodban did state publicly that an objective analysis of the DRB had turned up no instances of bias in their decision making, the public has been left to speculate just how much Rest's DRB chair departure can be attributed to his earlier claims. Uh, now you can find all these Dummerston select board meetings at BertelbroTV.org. Let's do the official 545 Live or rewind in time here and get the breakdown. I think this board has bullied us. I think you basically call in names and run away. I don't think it was intentional, but I think that's happened. I've read more than two dozen development review board decisions, and I can discern no instances of bias or prejudice. They put great effort into evaluating each case that comes before them. All right, we'll move on and talk Senator Sanders for a moment as we check in with Bernie, courtesy of his YouTube channel, Senator Sanders, all one word, on YouTube.com. Here we go. If the Federal Reserve of the United States of America has money on hand to provide Wall Street banks with low interest loans, why not low interest loans for college students as well? That's one of the latest questions posed on the Senate floor in Washington by Senator Bernie Sanders this week, building on an Elizabeth Warren concept, one that says Sanders could just help us avoid a new national crisis. And as just about anyone fresh off a BA trip in the States can tell you, the notion of spending the next three decades working out from under crushing high interest debt just doesn't seem like the right move for a nation still struggling to gain its financial foothold. Sanders' proposal, which would use low interest loans from the Fed funneled through the Department of Education, could hit the House floor before coming his way in the Senate as early as next January. But for many struggling to plan for college, that can't come soon enough. We can do it. For Wall Street, we should do it for middle class and working families. So that is, in my view, the long-term solution to this problem. All right, just a few things to wrap up here on this midweek edition of 545 Live. And it being a Tuesday show, we like to do a little shameless promotion of what's coming up on BCTV this week, uh, both right here on our public channel, Channel 8, and our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, and then subsequently on our website where all of this local programming uh, is available to stream. Uh, I better uh, start talking about the shows here as we get the split screen going. We'll take one more chance to uh, promote the upcoming live BHS graduation coverage, 6.15 p.m. right here on Channel 8 this coming Friday. Whether we're starting jobs, college, travel, or lives as famous cellists or Jedi Masters, we can set out as beginners in the best possible sense. Congratulations, class of 2012, and may the force be with you. And catch a glance at BCTV's brand new HD studio in the works as the local group uh, Wild Nights joined the program Artist a la Mode for a uh, jam-packed set that included 17 songs. Uh, jamming away with horn, saxophone, and the like that's shown all this week right here on Channel 8 as well. Here's one I want to Times I could have had people sad. Get uh, schedules for both our channels. Find out when to watch them on Comcast Cable and stream all these videos at your leisure online. One more time. Last time I say it, I swear. BrettleBroTV.org. All right, that's a full lid for me here on this uh, midweek slash weekend edition of 545 Live as we take a Friday edition off so we can cover BHS graduation. But we'll be back uh, a week from today, Tuesday, right here on BCTV Channel 8 at 545 p.m. In the meantime, uh, be sure to uh, get involved in some of those weekend events, be it uh, the 7 p.m. vigil on the Common here in Brattleboro for the six-month anniversary of the Newtown, Connecticut shootings or uh, NFI's Pitching for Families Beanbag uh, Contest fundraiser, uh, any of those. Uh, whatever you do, however you do it uh, this coming week, be sure to stay safe out there. Night, everybody.